Many, many zoos use painting and artwork as a, as a kind of enrichment activity, as a leisure activity to keep the animals happy and occupied. Obviously we've come a long way in zoos where there just used to be concrete and metal cages to having very many toys and things to hang off and swing around and the kind of painting activities is one, one way that, that um, animals have been kept more active mentally. The different species are kind of taught to paint in different ways or encouraged to paint in different ways. With the, the elephants, it's really quite different to how you might imagine it. Their handler is, is holding them by the ear and just kind of using the ear like a, a, a joystick, if you like, to, to steer the trunk. But it displays an incredible level of dexterity. In the 1950s, a popular television program called Zoo Time um, emerged, made by Granada Television and presented by uh, Desmond Morris. And this was a runaway success in terms of popular television. One of the most well-received moments of the show was when Congo uh, would do some drawings on camera. And this gave a body of work which was then shown in 1958 at the Institute for Contemporary Art. You could see the evolution of um, uh, a particular sort of drawing style, if you like, that there was a change in the way in which uh, Congo was approaching drawing. What we've tried to do here is, uh, I don't, don't know if it's exactly the, the first show, but what, one of the, the first shows to look at um, bringing various, various different species together and to try, try and take a broader view over what's happening um, amongst a variety of species and whether we can call it art or, or not. But certainly, I think uh, this painting by Samantha is a lot more coherent than, than the painting by the orangutan. As an artist myself, I do instinctively want, want them, you know, the, these animals to be sort of engaging in the process that I engage in. I don't believe that's the case, if I'm honest, but I think that what they produce is still striking. I think visually it's very interesting, and as I said, watching, watching them do it, is, is quite eerie a lot of the time. With the orangutans, they're kind of encouraged on a spot by spot basis. So they're given the brush, paint gets put on the brush, and then they're told to touch the paper. And once they touch the paper, they're given a reward. I think with the other apes, it's a, a bit more free and they just go for it and do what they like. I think we are asking the question, is it art or is it just creator activity? But it certainly makes me think more about looking at human art, thinking, you know, is that art? What is, what is the intention? Can animals be creative? It's, it's you know, the artwork is obviously only one, one version of that. There's many other ways that animals can express themselves through bird song and other vocalizations that they're clearly um, just doing things for fun. But it's certainly true that animals do express themselves. So that does raise the question of if, you know, if there's expression, there's creativity, you know, where does art begin and creativity end? Aww. I think he's dead. <laughs>